As you may have experienced yourselves, we live in an era of dongles and adapters. It started off with smartphones and laptops that came with less and less ports, but now we slowly start seeing the same practice on motherboards of desktop PCs. We are therefore increasingly dependent on dongles, adapters and overall extensions. At least those of us that need more connectivity than we are being offered nowadays. Of course, there are internal solutions in the form of expansion cards, but these can't always be used universally and conveniently. So could dongles, adapters, hubs and or docking stations come to our rescue? How well do they really work and what about these speeds? Also, I'll be covering a bonus topic today, namely what good external M.2 SSD cases really are and whether or not we lose out on any SSD performance at all and if we do, how much? That is when compared to having the SSD installed internally. To help and give you a better example of what I'm dealing with today, I'll be using two Orico products. One is a 90 US dollar USB-C docking station with hub functionality for USB ports, HDMI, charging and a gigabit LAN port, SD card reader and an integrated M.2 SSD slot. As a contrast, there's also a cheap product from the same brand, an ordinary USB 3.0 hub that also comes with an SD and micro SD card reader and costs around eight to $10. Do these products really work and are they keeping their promises or is there something we should be watching out for? While the cheap hub comes without any additional accessories, the $90 docking station and overall all-in-one solution shown comes with a nice storage bag to carry around. Inside is our product. We not only get a 10 gigabit per second USB-C cable, but also an M.2 SSD heatsink, including a tray and thermal pads. So what is the eight to $10 hub offering? My particular model has three USB type A ports, all of which offer a bandwidth of five gigabits per second. Of course, you'll have to connect to a fast enough port on your device to fully make use of the bandwidth. I should probably also point out that a lot of such hubs don't allow for devices to be charged. This also applies to the model I have here. Furthermore, we are offered a full-size SD card reader along with a micro SD card slot, both of which can be used simultaneously and are said to be able to transfer with up to a max speed of 104 megabytes per second. So are we losing out on any USB speed or not? As a reference value, I've plugged in my fastest USB flash drive I had, which reads at almost 440 megabytes per second and writes at 400 megabytes per second. If the same flash drive is now connected to the hub mentioned, I measure these same values overall with only minimal deviations. Video files from my SD card can be transferred at a respectable speed of around 85 megabytes per second. That's my SD card's max speed already. It's as fast as it goes. So what kind of connectivity does the more expensive docking station offer us at $90? First of all, the option of installing an M.2 NVMe SSD in it. And that's with a size type of even 2280. By the way, the whole body is aluminum, so it makes a high quality impression. Although the cover on top is plastic, it attaches magnetically. Since M.2 NVMe SSDs are known to run quite hot, there is a heatsink set included. But frankly, it looks fairly decent and positively surprised. We also get a total of three thermal pads. Now, in order to install the SSD, you place it in its provided tray, then pull off the protective strips from the thermal pad, and then carefully place it on top of the SSD, which of course is quite difficult for me with the camera rolling and doing this from behind the tripod. After about seven minutes of utter clumsiness, I did finally manage to do it. In the end, you simply push the heatsink in place so that it snaps into those grooves, allowing for sufficient pressure on the thermal pad. Now it's time to clip on this little plastic holder to the back of the SSD, and once it's locked in place, rotate it slightly to keep the drive from moving. All that's left to do is to put the cover back on. As far as further connectivity is concerned, we have the PC input to actually connect to a PC or laptop, and a USB-C 
PD100 watt charging port, so up to 100 watts of power can be provided via the docking station. Then we get a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port with a bandwidth of 5 gigabits per second, HDMI with support for up to 4K at 60Hz, as well as a gigabit Ethernet port. On the other side we see a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second port, then another one but as type A, followed by yet another type A port, but limited to 5 gigabits per second. Last but not least, card readers for SD and micro SD cards. Now what are the speeds like? Let's start with the M.2 SSD. As a reference value, I first installed it internally, which it actually is intended for, via PCIe 3.0 x4, translating to a bandwidth of 32 gigabits per second. When reading, we're looking at almost 3500 megabytes per second. When writing, 2500 megabytes per second. Now when the M.2 SSD is installed and connected externally via the SSD enclosure, I only read out a solid 950 megabytes per second for read and almost 760 megabytes per second for write. This is probably due to the fact we are dealing with a different bandwidth. If I test again, but this time on my entry level laptop, I only read out 450 and 430 megabytes per second, respectively. So it entirely depends to which source device you're hooking up such an external SSD. If your device's USB port is slower, the SSD within the SSD enclosure will not be showing its full potential. But now let's get to yet another interesting question. Can one expect differences in transfer speed when comparing cheap USB hubs with more expensive ones? Of course, one can simply generalize that, since it greatly depends on the brand and model, but in my case, I couldn't measure any significant performance differences. The SD card readers are about the same speed, and the USB speed is almost identical. But that's because my USB flash drive is the bottleneck here and simply can't make use of the full 10 gigabit per second bandwidth of the faster hub. So to get back to the question in the beginning, yes, unless you buy some kind of garbage, products of this type do keep their promises. However, one should always keep in mind the ports you connect such docking stations, hubs or adapters to. If the port on your source device such as PC or laptop is too slow or simply too old, you'll only see limited functionality and speeds. Personally, I find it sad that we have to go for these external solutions more and more often, all because laptop and motherboard manufacturers skimp on the amounts of ports. Still at least there are good solutions out there that can help us out, although I've always had a hard time putting my trust into USB powered devices. However, even docking stations nowadays run fairly stable via USB. So I have no idea whether you enjoyed this slightly different type of video, but it was one of these topics that has been on my mind for months. Thanks to all of you that stuck around to the end of this video and see you in the next one.